This video is not going to be a usual review video, nor it is a sponsored product or not something that was sent by me. But I want to talk about action cameras and I want to talk about these action cameras because I have gone through quite a few action cameras in the last, I don't know, eight years. And I mostly use it to uh, film like family moments. So whenever we travel and I uh, take some short videos, like we go to the beach or you know, we are on holiday or we go to a wellness hotel, then I usually take these cameras and I create short clips and I just put these short clips together uh, to make like maybe like a 5, 10, 15 minute video, depending on how, man, how much footage I have. I just uh, try to use, you know, shorter clips to make it interesting. In most cases, I, well, even in the past, I just left the audio out and I just replaced it with some background music. And I create these videos and I put them on YouTube on my wife's Google account and I upload them as unlisted so nobody would be able to find these videos, uh, only the uh, people I send the, the URL to. And I just find it really easy to share it with the family, you know, with my uh, mother-in-law and father-in-law. They usually watch it on the TV or sometimes they watch it on a, uh, on a mobile phone. And I think for these type of purposes, these action cameras are actually really, really great. So today I want to talk about how I use these cameras, what were the main reasons why I purchased them, and you know maybe just give you a bit of a history of these uh, cameras. And of course, probably the most I'm going to talk about is this new GoPro Hero 9 that I only recently purchased like a couple of weeks ago. Uh, because up until now I was, uh, you know, trying to go cheap and buy um, Chinese brands, which I was completely happy with. And I guess I just come to the point where I thought that, uh, you know, I can spend the extra money and uh, go for a GoPro because I was thinking that probably not because of the picture quality, but some other features I would be able to use. And actually there are quite a few features which come really, really handy when I create these uh, home videos. And this is what I also want to talk about in this video. So if you are thinking about whether you want to use your phone or whether you need an action cameras, maybe that uh, video is going to help you to decide if, you know, for family photos and for family moments, whether the action cameras have any, you know, real use as opposed to a mobile phone. And you can always say that you can just use your mobile phone, but um, I just find it much easier to use an action camera to create videos. And I only take out my phone when I'm using a photo because, you know, by the time you unlock and then, you know, maybe you have to put your password or you scan your fingerprint or, you know, your face is not recognized and the camera is on photo mode. So you have to remember to switch it to video mode. I mean, you take this into your hand, you switch it on, you press the button and it starts recording. It doesn't get any easier than that. And I think it is much smaller. So uh, I just like it. I just like the form factor. So I have a video video camera, which is my action camera, and I have a photo device, which is my mobile phone to capture moments. So this is all started with this uh, yellow camera. This is an Alacam uh, Explorer. And uh, <laughs> lucky enough, I was able to uh, find the, uh, the invoice for this camera. So I purchased this in uh, February 2016. And uh, to be honest, I purchased this uh, from Gearbest. This was my, I think, my first purchase from Gearbest. And to be honest, I don't remember anymore what was the reason why I chose this camera because, uh, well, it was just a long time ago. So I think I just did some research and some online uh, stuff uh, like you know doing some reviews and um, yeah I thought you know maybe this is going to work for me and uh, well I purchased this and I was using this for a relatively short period of time mainly because um, I think I scratched the front uh, lens and then I was thinking about replacing the front lens but then um, I ended up buying the second camera but still talking about this um, it is you know, it, um, the main reason I, well, the first reason I purchased this one and, and wasn't buying a GoPro back at the time, because I knew that I wanted a screen. 
This has the Wi-Fi option, so it can connect to a companion app, but I never use that app because, again, I just want simplicity. I want to take this out, turn this on, look at the screen, and then start recording. I mean, I won't be able to record because there is no uh, memory card in it. So, you know, it's just an ease of use. And, uh, you know, it works. And back in 2016, it had a really good uh, picture quality. So I'm just going to overlay some images. And uh, I mean, of course, you have to be aware that it best works outdoors. But when you look at these seaside images, I think, especially in 2016, it was really, really good quality. And I think it is even good quality today. I don't remember what is the sensor on this camera, but probably the only thing which I wasn't well, I wasn't really happy with uh, is that it has a really uh, wide uh, field of view. So I think 170 degrees. But this is what I had back in the day. And as I said, the reason I choose this one and not a GoPro because I wanted a screen. And I think this probably had an even um, narrower field of view than a GoPro. So the GoPro was even wider. So, and by the way, this was $64 back in 2016, which is, I'm pretty sure that it was at least half price of uh, the current or the back in, back in the day GoPro model. So I was very happy with it and I got a lot of uh, accessories with it, you know, waterproof case and everything. So yeah, it worked for me. And as I said, I uh, scratched the front lens or actually I think my son did that. And, um, and then I started looking for something else, even though I actually uh, purchased a replacement lens. So this has been repaired and this is a, you know, fully functioning camera and I just put this on charge. So, you know, it works and uh, I don't use it anymore, but I definitely not going to throw this away and it can be used as a, I don't know, an emergency camera or if for any reason I need like a second or a third camera. The only problem with this is that when I replace the uh, uh, sensor, I think I put the IR filter the wrong way around. So in certain light conditions, the colors are off. So I just need to take this apart and then, you know, do it again. But uh, yeah, so this was the Alacam uh, Explorer. And then when I started looking again, uh, the, the only thing I, well, there was two other things that I was looking for. I, I had a little bit better idea of uh, what sensors are used and what are the good sensors for these cameras. And I also wanted a narrower field of view. So I came across this Yi light uh, or Yi action light camera. And back in the day, I remember that uh, there was already a more expensive model, which was able to record in 4K, but I never wanted 4K. I just thought, okay, I'm good enough. The, what is it? The full HD model is good enough for me. So I purchased this uh, Yi light. And the only other thing I do remember is that it has a narrower field of view, which is 150 degrees. And it uses the Sony, I think it's x -more sensor. That is the sensor which is used even in the flagship models back in the day. And um, it has definitely a really good camera. I was really happy how it works. Again, it has a screen, it has touch screen. So it is really easy to use. It doesn't have a lot of buttons. Uh, I think there is... Oh, there is only one button. It also has a Wi-Fi app, which I never used. So you have a basically an on off and a shutter button on the top. And then you can just do everything on the screen by changing, you know, the different modes. And I purchased this in uh, November 2017. And uh, I think I paid 88 uh, USD for this. I purchased this from AliExpress and it also came with a few accessories uh, or well, I purchased some additional accessories. But uh, uh, yeah, and this was my daily driver. Well, yeah, so my weekend or holiday driver for many, many years, basically up until uh, one month ago this year. So from 2017 to 2022, uh, I used this and I made a, you know, a bunch of uh, uh, recordings with this. The only other thing which I really like about this is that it had one particular function. I don't know if I will be able to find this. So there is, it has a electronic image stabilization, which I turned off and it has this mode, which says distortion on and off. And I think what it did is um, it by software, it was trying to reduce the fisheye effect, trying to even out the edges on the, on the corners, which actually helped with, uh, you know, reducing this fisheye look. And uh, this is something that I also really, really liked. 
So then come to 2022, uh, the current year, I wanted something new and I was again looking at the Chinese market. I was looking at what the best action cameras are. And actually I found one which I really liked, which was the DJI Action Cam. But again, that was a discontinued model and the new Action Cam 2 had features and a form factor I didn't really like. So yeah, and I was looking at some other things. Again, I was looking for cameras which use the Sony sensor, so a really good sensor. But to be honest, uh, there are so many models which use the Sony sensor, so it is uh, it makes it a, really bit, a little bit difficult to to pick and well I also started looking at the GoPros but again I just found that the GoPro cost at least twice as much especially in Hungary where we have a really high VAT. The DJI was also almost in the GoPro time uh, you know price range so I thought okay if I'm willing to spend that money maybe I should go for a GoPro and uh, then I decided that I'm going to purchase this GoPro for the um, you know when I go for a long weekend and we were planning to go to Switzerland to Basel and I thought okay maybe what I can do is you know if I find if the you know the price is the main thing maybe I can look at the duty-free shop in the airport or in Switzerland as well or Switzerland itself to buy the GoPro and actually I ended up going to the media mart in the, in the Basel or well, a couple of stores, but I ended up in the media market in Basel and they had a really good price. I think I paid 325 Swiss francs, which at the time it was pretty much the same as in euros. So 323 euros, which was like about 100 USD cheaper than what would be the price in Hungary. So yeah, I said that, okay, I'm going to spend the money. And uh, well, this is why I have a GoPro now. And actually, um, I still thought that I don't need a latest model, GoPro Hero 10 is out now, uh, but the 9 is still available, so I was definitely going for a cheaper option. I just bought a simple GoPro uh, Hero 9 model without any accessories, and well, I just purchased some additional accessories a little bit later. I also want to just say a couple of things why I think the action cameras are actually good for this type of family recordings. I want to go back in time when we were using, uh, you know, camcorders. And I think one of the big issues with the camcorders uh, back in the day is that it given you so many different options. You know, everyone was zooming and I remember so many old family videos where the whole video is about like somebody zooming in and out and it just makes me dizzy. And now you have this really, really sim simple camera, which is point and shoot because of the uh, uh, wide uh, field of view. You don't really have to look where you are shooting because pretty much everything is going to be in the frame. So that's also good. There is no zoom. So if you want something to be you know, closer, you just have to get closer to, the, uh, to your subject. Uh, of course, the other issue with these is that because they have a really f uh, wide field of view, uh, they do have uh, an issue that your horizon is going to be tilted. So you, you, you should try to keep your horizon in the middle, especially if you are um, you know, filming a lake. So the, the, it has to be in the middle of the lake, otherwise it curves up and down, which is, uh, I mean, you know, it's five. This is the fisheye effect. But uh, if you don't want that, then uh, you can do this uh, or you can just you know, play around with framing the, uh, the picture. But again, that's uh, something that you learn. And uh, even though, you know, I, I'm using now the GoPro and you know, using all these other cameras, they would never be the uh, same quality as a, you know, a proper camcorder or one of the newer flagship uh, mobile phones. But again, uh, um, you know, I'm capturing family moments and it's going to be good enough. And also I have to be aware that especially the, the night capabilities are not going to be great. But again, we're going with a family. We are usually out in, uh, you know, in the beach or a forest. There is, in most cases, plenty of light. So these cameras are performing uh, pretty good. So let me talk about this GoPro and um, let me summarize the, the reasons I think at least for me, it actually worth the extra money that I had to pay for it on top of what I would have paid for, um, you know, something like a Chinese brand. Because to be honest, I don't think it's the image quality because nowadays 
well, even in the past, I think these Chinese cameras have pretty good image quality as well. I mean, uh, of course, it's not really a big, uh, really good comparison. And, you know, maybe I can you know, play around with the field of view. You can see how much wider the uh, Yi action camera is compared to the GoPro. And uh, I mean, the screens are different, so this is a much better screen. But again, this is like a 2017 model. Uh, and Hero 9 is probably just a couple of years old. And I assume that this, well, sorry, I purchased this in 2017, but probably it was like a 2015 or 16 model. So one is, uh, um, is probably the field of view, which I wanted to demonstrate it here. And um, I mean, this camera already had an error field of view, but here on the GoPro, you can actually uh, change the field of view. So if you want to record something indoors where you have a really limited space, you can make it really, really wide, but then you can also make it uh, like this one. And it's still, you know, wider than a normal um, camcorder, but it is actually quite close. So I'm, I'm quite happy the way this handles it. And if I go into the settings, you can see that if I change the, uh, resolution i always have to figure out where it is because uh bitrate no it's not here uh, maybe it's outside i think it's here oh no no that's the that's the speed oh i think it's here yeah so you can have a really you know super wide angle where you can pretty much see everything and then you can have a wide and then you can have a linear. And this is what I usually use. So it says 19 to 30, nine millimeter equivalent. So I think that's good. There are some other modes here. So there is a specific and narrow mode. So 27 millimeter. And there is another mode which uh, I think it keeps the horizon level. So it has this feature where, you know, probably has an accelerometer or something like, um, so it knows uh, which orientation it is. But I just used it in this linear mode and I think it's, it's a good field of view. There is not an awful lot of distortion, but again, it's still easy to use because uh, uh, it is wider than a normal camcorder. So that's one reason. The other reason is, if we stay with the image, uh, is it has this special mode, which is called the boost mode. And it makes, um, it is like an image stabilization mode, but it makes it, um, you know, much better than the standard image stabilization. So I usually shoot all my videos with this boost mode on. And as you can see, it sort of like uh, buffers out or smooths out the, the, the movements and the transitions. Probably it, you know, creates the videos in higher resolution and it just crops it to the, um, um, to the full HD that I'm recording in. The main reason it is important because I can walk with this camera in my hand and, you know, record um, like a city scene or something and it's not going to appear shaky. So this is, I think this is a really good feature and probably other cameras have image stabilization as well, optical image stabilization, but this uh, software feature seems to be working in this one uh, really, really good. Now, uh, uh, continuing in terms of the quality, uh, quality of things is sound, especially with these two cameras. I think one of them is switching off. The issue was that the sound, even if you use the camera as it is without any cover, was eh, quite poor. And especially if you are using a waterproof case like this one, then you are just getting muffled sounds of you know water sloshing around. Um, so the, the audio part of the recording was pretty much unusable in most cases. So this is why I started to just use the footage and then maybe just uh, mute uh, or just tone down the, uh, the audio, uh, the recorded audio and just use some background music. But with the GoPro, it is really, really good. And it is good if you are using the GoPro like this one. But the other great feature is that this GoPro is water resistant up to 10 meters which means that even if you are recording things in the pool, it still be able to record decent audio. What I noticed, or I think what is happening is that the microphone is here, and when the, uh, there is water in this microphone hole or this cavity, which is behind those uh, small dots, then the sound is a little bit muffled, but after a couple of seconds, those, uh, when you take the, uh, the camera out from the water, then usually the water goes away and then it records really, really good video, uh, sorry, audio. So again, this is, that's, that's, that's pretty good. 
And, and of course it means that there is one less thing that you have to carry around. Uh, you don't need a waterproof case, you just need the camera and you know some holder or a float and you would be able to record in the water and outside the water as well. So I think that's a, that's a big thing, especially if you are going, you know, or if you're going to go on holidays with, you know, water sports or to the beach or uh, th stuff like that. So it's the, um, it's the field of view, this boost mode, the, uh, the uh, quality of the audio. And it, I think these are the three things that actually sold me this camera. Well, I wouldn't say sold me because, uh, well, I purchased the cameras I, and I discovered these features uh, after that. So I haven't done an awful lot of research prior to purchasing the camera. So I just, uh, you know, figured these out um, once I started using the camera. And then probably my only criticism is uh, the actual picture quality. I think I'm going to overlay some videos here. Uh, this is one of my first recording. And then in some cases I was, I, I had a feeling that the, the image quality or the video quality is just not good enough. Like I, I felt like that it is using too much compression and there was too many artifacts in the video. So I started playing around with some of the settings uh, and I think maybe I found some optimal settings or at least some settings that work better. So first of all, as I said, I don't need 4K, so I'm always recording everything in 80, uh, full HD. So one thing I've done is I upped the, um, so I started recording in 25 frames per second. So that would be like 30 frames per second in the US. And I upped it to uh, 50 or 60, depending on where you are. So I was thinking that, you know, with a higher bit rate, sorry, the higher frame rate, the bit rate is going to be higher. So there's going to be more data uh, recorded. And anyway, I'm going to done convert all my videos to, um, you know, full HD 25 frames per, frames per second. So, but still I would have more data left uh, on the final editing to, to produce a better, uh, you know, result. The other thing I've done is um, here I selected a high bit rate. Although it says that it really only uses uh, for 2K and up, I think it probably makes some difference for the full HD uh, as well. And I have uh, reduced the sharpness. So by default, the sharpness is on top. And um, I mean, I'm still experimenting with this, but I think uh, by reusing this sort of artificial sharpness, I'm introducing less, uh, you know, computation into the video. So, um, you know, if there is noise in the video, that is not going to be enhanced by some of the sharpness uh, routines. Uh, but I mean, at the moment it is uh, speculative. Uh, I'm not really sure if uh, that's really, really the case. And I think what I could be doing is uh, maybe I can reduce the maximum ISO because, um, well, definitely the, uh, you know, the video gets grainier as, uh, you are increasing the ISO setting um, in low light conditions. So maybe if you can limit that, you can just limit the, uh, uh, you know, the maximum settings and also uh, limit the, the amount of grain in the video. And, you know, I'm not really using as an action camera. So even if I'm using a lower settings in a lower light condition, the video is maybe it's going to be a little bit softer or slower. But again, um, usually the type of things I'm recording is, uh, is it's just fine. So actually these are the settings that I created for most of my recording. Um, there are also a couple of things which uh, I like to do. For example, I turn this on so the, the camera doesn't start orienting itself based on the camera position because I'm always recording everything in landscape. So I don't need a camera to you know, figure out what uh, you know, I may want. And also within, I think somewhere in the preferences, um, there is a connection option or maybe it's, it's out there. I mean, I'm still, you know, trying to use these things. So I um, disable the wireless connection because I'm, again, I'm not really using my phone to take videos or uh, control the camera. Maybe I would use it once in a while, but, uh, 
in most cases I just don't. I created the app or set up the app on my phone which uh, updated the firmware on the camera on the first time and I never used it since. So I just uh, turn off the connection and I changed this USB connection from the GoPro Connect to MTP. So that means that when you connect it to your USB uh, camera sorry, uh, to the USB uh, to your laptop, then you can see the files and you can just copy the files off uh, as opposed to removing the SD card. Although I've also found that in some cases I was trying to copy the files off the camera so I can just edit it on my computer, but then it was saying that I had insufficient space where I clearly had enough space. So it was something wrong uh, uh, with the USB driver or you know how the camera was reporting how much files I want to copy because when I just removed the SD card and put it into my computer I could copy the files obviously I had enough space to you know to use all these files and maybe for the sake of completeness I'm just going to show you some of the things that I purchased for well for the GoPro and some of the uh, my other cameras so especially the LF phone or the LF cam and the Yi came with a lot of different accessories different mounts and and adapters uh, interestingly both of these cameras use uh, oh so this doesn't have any mount the action uh, the Yi camera has a normal tripod mount and the GoPro uh, well has this usual GoPro stuff so now I have a lot of different um, adapters so I can use either the GoPro to convert it to a camera mount or the camera mount to a GoPro uh, type so yeah I'm quite happy with that so especially with the Yi uh, light I was yeah the Yi light I had to purchase a waterproof case so this is what I was using actually maybe this is the waterproof case for this one yeah, definitely, because that has these many mountains. But anyway, this has a very similar waterproof case. Um, as I said, it's great. It's one more thing to carry around. It's not a big deal. It just muffles the sound. So when you are recording in the water, but outside the water, you basically, you, you are not going to hear anything in the recording. And also a good idea is to buy some floats. So this is the float for the Yi. Unfortunately, these floats are usually not interchangeable because uh, they usually balanced for the weight of the camera. And for example, the GoPro is much heavier than any of these two uh, cameras. So if I would use this for the GoPro, then it would just sink to the bottom. So that's not a really useful. And the other thing I purchased oh, many years ago, I don't even remember where and what was the name, is this uh, guy. And this has a, a tripod mount. So the uh, my Yi camera was uh, able to screw onto that one and uh, I, I used it quite a lot. Oh, it says it's Joby. I used it quite a lot, especially when I was filming my um, trains. I can just clip it on and like fasten it and it keeps the whole camera really, really rigid. I mean, it, it wobbles around a little bit, but not uh, that much. So that was also a good mount. I can't really use it directly for the GoPro because the different mounts, but I actually for one of these cameras, I, I have one which uh, converts this one to that one. So actually I could use this as well. But for the GoPro, I actually decided to buy this kit. I think it was, oh, I don't remember the name. It was some travel kit, but it's GoPro branded. So it's probably GoPro. And uh, this comes with this, uh, sort of like clip so I can clip it onto something and it comes with this uh, adapter so this clips into here that screws onto there and then you can just clip it to things and this is probably one thing uh, that clip is probably something that I'm not going to use awful lot but I also purchased this which is like I mean it's like a handle and then you can extend it so it's like a mini selfie stick and also the base becomes a tripod so you can just uh, place it if you want uh, some static or time lapse so I think it's good it's compact it, it weighs next to nothing so that's great and uh, as a separate item I, I purchased a flow this is not GoPro branded I think this is Hummer branded but again it uh, is designed for the GoPro so it keeps the GoPro uh, buoyant and it doesn't sink to the bottom of the pool which is the main you know, thing about a float. That's, that's what you would expect a float to do. So I think that's, uh, that's good. And actually with the camera and this one and uh, the float, it all fits into this uh, small pouch. So that's great. 
To be honest, in terms of the battery life, this uh, camera can run, I think from the standard battery, it runs for like two hours. And I definitely not going to use, well, I'm not recording two hours of footage or I'm not using the camera for two hours in a single day. So it always gives me the opportunity to charge it overnight. So I haven't purchased any uh, um, additional batteries or charger because uh, simply I just don't need it. If I would need a, um, to do a time lapse, then I can just open up the flap here and uh, plug it in a, you know, an external power source like a, uh, power bank and I can use it that way but uh, so far it was not something that I needed to do. So I think that was my long-winded uh, discussion and you know thoughts about GoPro and action cameras and using action cameras for you know family photos and uh, why is it good and maybe why it could be better. So I hope you find this useful but that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next video.